Charles V divides his empire and Spain becomes the dominant power in Europe. Philip II embraces the Counter-Reformation and Spain becomes the fanatic of Europe. The Dutch rebellion then becomes both a military conflict and a crusade. France, recovering from a devastating civil war, fearing the Habsburgs, declare war on Spain, war on the Emperor. At Rheinfelden they sever the Spanish road from Italy to Flanders, forcing Spain to send supplies by sea, for which they assembled their largest fleet this century. The Dutch replaced their aristocratic admirals with seasoned sailors, both former flag captains with the great Peter Hein. Richelieu, at crippling cost, constructed a great fleet and told his admiral to engage only with the practical certainty of success. Struggling to fight two wars, Oliveres requested 2,000 professional Walloons from the Netherlands. In return, 2,000 Spaniards were loaded in chains, forced to fight in Flanders. The ship's captains, hiding indoors to avoid the wailing wives and children, Cardinal Spinola sent the men food parcels, but the families were left destitute. On August 27th, the fleet departed La Caruna, with orders to proceed directly to Dunkirk, but if encountering the Dutch and French fleets, to hazard everything to destroy them both. Richelieu tells his admiral to let others take the chestnuts from the fire. On September 15th, they learn Tromp is alone with only 13 ships and are beside themselves. De Aquendo issues no orders to his fleet, saying only that they are but small fry and the flag will set a good example. They anchor off Selsey Bill and Tromp dispatches a ship to alert De Witt. The next morning, Tromp and De Witt form a tight line and tack toward the enemy, who are scattered about in incredible disorder. De Aquendo and his Dunkirk Corsairs become detached from the Spanish fleet as they pursue the Dutch, who repeatedly luff into the wind and deliver broadsides. Inexplicably, a Dutch ship explodes, followed by a gunpowder explosion in De Witt's cabin but the Dutch ships sail better and are getting the better of the action. De Aquendo tries repeatedly to grapple and board the Dutch flagship, then attempts the same with De Witt. He is wanting to reprise a flagship duel which made him famous. Having crossed the channel and driven the Dutch onto a lee shore, De Aquendo, who has failed in this duel with up to 200 dead and injured and his ship in tatters, breaks off the action, his ship slowly and reluctantly following his orders. On the 17th, with little wind, repairs are made. At 2am, Tromp launches an attack, first of all upon Aquendo's flagship and gave him every one of their broadsides and tore him exceedingly, and then to work pell-mell with all the fleet. Early next morning, he's joined by Bankett's squadron. They formed two lines of 15 and hammered the armada stoutly. Tromp resupplies at Calais and the Spanish retire to the Downs. Charles I, having lost the First Bishop's War, is being affronted in his own chamber and sends Pennington to curb Dutch insolences. By the 21st of October, the Dutch have 106 ships and 16 fire ships. The inevitable carnage followed, many Spanish ships ran themselves aground, De Aquendo escaped and returned home in disgrace. He died the following year. Having witnessed the worst atrocities of the Counter-Reformation, the Dutch won their freedom at the Peace of Westphalia.